From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ralph Kearns, Johnny. Great Plains Garrity. Oh, hi, Ralph. Johnny, you're 52 years old. I am? Eight months ago, you married a lovely 27-year-old girl. Now I'm with you. A month later, you took out a $50,000 life insurance policy on a chief of police's salary. I did, huh? And who did I name as beneficiary? Your beautiful wife. Who else? So? So, three days ago, you were shot to death. Eh, I had a feeling it wasn't going to last. And 24 hours later, your wife files a claim on the policy. My friends tried to warn me she was fast. Well, there's the setup. What do you think? The same thing you probably do. In that case, you got just 56 minutes to catch the plane. The town is Greensport, Missouri. And watch yourself. What do you mean? From what I hear, Johnny, it's a wide-open town. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Great Plains Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the open town matter. Item one, $84.60, transportation and incidentals, Hartford to Greensport and taxi to the townhouse hotel. I was hoping for a chance to shower and change, look around long enough to get my bearings and then edge into the case gradually. But it didn't work out that way. The case was already there and waiting for me right in the lobby of the hotel. All dressed up in a shiny black suit, squeaky black shoes, and a neater-than-neat little black bow tie. Oh, am I glad to see you, Mr. Dollar. Are you? Oh, indeed, yes, I am. I just breathed a great big sigh. Relief, you know, when I heard you tell the clerk your name. That's how I know you're you, you know. You mean there's been some doubt? But of course you'll want to know I'm me, so I'll swear I had a card in one of these pockets. Well, uh, maybe you could just tell me who you are, Mr. Uh... Potter, Averill P. Potter. I ought to have a card, though, to make it more official. Oh, never mind. I believe you. I must have given them all away. Don't worry, though. I'll get some more printed and see that you have one before you leave. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Potts. And now oh, oh, wait, to... Mr. Dollar. You want to talk to me, of course. Will I? Yes. I'm the agent here for the Great Plains Guarantee Company. I'm the one that sold that policy to the fellow that's dead. Oh, so that's him. Of course. <laughs> he wasn't dead then, you understand. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Feeling pretty lively, as a matter of fact, but with a new young wife and all that. I imagine so. And now uh, just Mr. What... Dollar... You've got to do something about that woman. Oh? Oh, she's driving me crazy. She wants her money, she says. $50,000. And she seems to think I'm carrying it around in my pocket. She's, uh, kind of anxious, huh? I'll tell you how anxious. Chief Blake was shot about two in the morning. And at three that afternoon, Marty, that's Mrs. Blake, was down at my office after a claim form. Yeah, I understand it was sent airmail special delivery. Well, she insisted on it. Made me take it straight to the post office as soon as she'd signed it. Pretty cold-blooded about it, huh? <laughs> Well, I've heard Marty Blake called a lot of different things in this town at different times, but never (laughs) cold-blooded. You follow me? I, uh, think I'm ahead of you. You'll know what I mean, all right, when you meet her. I can hardly wait. Man, oh, man, wow. Item two, a dollar and 15 cents taxi to the suburban home of Edgar Blake, former chief of police of Greensport, now deceased. On the strength of Potser's description of the widow, I added a shave to the shower and change, and I hoped I looked a little fresher than I felt. The house was a rambling two-story job set back from the street. Well-kept shrubbery, nice lawn, quiet neighborhood, and plenty expensive. I wondered how Blake had been able to afford it. I was halfway up the walk when a man came out the front door. He wavered down the steps, then stopped and waited for me, rocking slightly on his heels. A copper. I can tell him a block away. You're a copper, right? Wrong. Private eye, maybe? No. Insurance investigator. Insurance. That's what I just asked her about. And you know what she did? Threw you out, probably. Right. Said I was drunk. Oh, ridiculous. That's exactly what I said. Ridiculous, I told her. Ridiculous. But you know something? She was right, I am. No. I can hardly believe it. Well, it's a fact, though. At least a little bit. My name's Crayley. Joe Crayley. I'm a reporter. Greensport Daily Herald. Johnny Dollar. Hiya, Joe. Insurance, huh? And he did have some, or you wouldn't have had any reason to be here. She was lying. No comment. 
Who's the beneficiary? <laughs> Still no comment. It's her, of course. Little smarty Marty. His ever level little wife. How much is she going to make on the deal? Ah, uh, sorry, Joe. I... No comments. All right, let her lay. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, tell me something, Joe. Uh, suppose I want a little action. Want to get into a poker game while I'm here. Find a craft table, maybe. Any idea where I could go? Sure. Anyone a half a dozen different... <laughs> How long you been in town, Johnny? Mm, about an hour. You wised up pretty fast, didn't you? Well, I didn't know it was a secret. The town is wide open, isn't it? It is. But I wouldn't go around poking into things if I were you. A guy could get hurt, you see what I mean? Maybe a guy did get hurt. Blake, you mean? What makes you think so? Well, if somebody wanted to keep the rackets going, the police chief would be a natural target, wouldn't he? Not necessarily. Meaning? No comment. What was Blake's salary, Joe? Six thousand a year. On six thousand, he was living in a house like this. Wait till you see Marty. She's even more expensive. So that's why Greensport is wide open. The police chief was in. No comment. Mm. Well, he's out now, that's for sure. Uh, Joe, I'll probably be talking to you later. So yeah, I'll... yeah, do that. Just ask anybody. Joe Crayley, the alcoholic that works for the Herald. I'm always around somewhere. Well, how do you do? This is Blake. Yes, what can I do? Johnny Dollar. I'm representing the insurance company. Oh, come in, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. Come this way. I'm a little surprised, really. I hardly expected them to pay off so promptly. Well, in that case, you won't be too disappointed. Disappointed? What do you mean? I mean, I didn't come here to pay you anything. Then why did you come? I'm a special investigator, Mrs. Blake. What does that mean? The company would like a little more information about your husband's death. I told them all about it in the claim I sent to I them. I know, but sometimes oh, it's necessary. So that's the pitch. They're trying to squirm out of it. Why do you say that? Because they sent you here, that's why. And because they always do. I know how those companies operate. Well, you've had experience with them before. No, I haven't. But I'm a real smart girl, Mr. Dollar. And I know a fast shuffle when I see it coming. And a smart girl ought to know better than to yell before she's hurt. Why else would they send out a special investigator? I told you why. They want some more information. What information? What is it they want to know? The details, that's all. Exactly how your husband was killed. I told them all that in the claim. I know. He was look. shot to death with his own gun right here in his own house. Do you mind showing me how it happened? Oh, for the love of... Now, look, there won't be any payment until I file my report, Mrs. Blake. All right. You win. When you go after something, you really go after it, don't you? Well, that's what I get paid for. Oh. And what about something you personally wanted? Well, that would depend on how bad I wanted it. I see. Would you like a drink? No, 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 thanks. You won't mind if I have one. Right ahead. Looking at you. Right. Now, uh, if you wouldn't mind... Uh... Yeah, I know. Stick to business. All right, come on. Happened over here by the stairway. Mm -hmm. I see. Right here. This is where he fell. This is where he died. His gun was lying on the floor beside him. Middle of the night, wasn't it? About two in the morning, we'd been asleep. Why did he come downstairs? I heard a noise of some kind. It woke me up. I shook Ed and told him about it, and he came down to see what it was. He was armed? No. His gun was there on the hall table by the front door. Is that where he usually left it? Yes. Whenever he came home, he always took it off and put it there on the table. Then anyone who knew him would probably know they could find it there. Yes, I suppose so. All right. So uh, what happened? Well, like I said, Ed went on downstairs, and I walked out of the bedroom into the hall. Were there any lights on? Well, not down here. I turned on the hall light upstairs. Did you hear your husband say anything? No, all I heard was the shots, four or five of them. Then I heard someone run out the front door. And what did you do? I called out to Ed, but he didn't answer. Then I ran downstairs and found him lying here, dead. Did you get a look at the prowler or whoever it was? No, it was too dark. And he ran out as soon as he fired the shot. How did he get into the house? The detective said he forced the lock on the front door. I guess that was the sound that woke me up. 
And then he used a gun that was inside the house that he may or may not have known was inside the house. That's what the police figure. All right. What do you figure, Mrs. Blake? The same thing, I guess. I don't know any more about it than they do. I thought you might have some theory of your own. I'll string along with them. Uh Uh-huh. Just an accidental prowler who got panicky and snatched up a gun that happened to be lying around handy. I guess that's about it. Any idea at all who the prowler might have been? Of course not. Do you suppose it could have been somebody besides a prowler? Somebody who came here for the express purpose of murdering your husband? Oh. And had a lot of enemies, of course, because of his job. What about his friends, Mrs. Blake? What do you mean? Do you suppose one of his friends could have done it? I don't know what you're talking about. I've been admiring your watch. Hmm, real nice. Set in diamonds, emerald band. Must be worth around $2,000. Very nice. Well, thank you. And this house, the furniture, that car out there in the driveway. On a police chief's salary, Mrs. Blake. I... I wouldn't know anything about Ed's financial affairs. Who runs the rackets here in Greensport? What rackets, Mr. Dollar? Was your husband in on them? Sure you won't have that drink? All right, Mrs. Blake, play it your way. I thought the insurance company was probably convinced that I was the one who killed him. They're not convinced of anything yet. But they think I did it, don't they? No, but they think 24 hours is pretty fast for a grief-stricken widow to shoot a claim into the office. I am not grief-stricken, Mr. Dollar. So I've noticed. Do I have to be? Is there some clause in the policy? No, you don't have to be. You think I did it, don't you? I think there's a strong chance you did. Then I think you need a little straightening out. I'll listen. Uh Uh-uh. Why should I make it easy for you? Go see Dave Sherman. Talk to him. Dave Sherman? The city attorney. See what he says before you get all lathered up. See if he thinks I'm guilty. All right, I will. And then we'll talk. And if you're nice enough to me, maybe I'll even cooperate. You never know. Do you? Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Before I do that, please let me say thanks to all of you who are so kind about writing and telling us how much you like Johnny Dollar. It's very gratifying, gratifying encouragement to all of us who are involved in production of the program. And we appreciate your letters more than you know. As always, I'll try to answer you promptly, but sometimes the mail does pile up. In any event, thanks. Thanks very much for writing. Tomorrow, a smash in the teeth opens things up and an airtight alibi gets air-conditioned. With bullets. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield, and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.